friends. Today on my live, we learned how to make glazed carrots and kale. So if you want to learn how to make that, then you'll see a sh live taping of me making glazed carrots and kale. Hi everyone. I'm Alex. Uh, you might know me as Gucci Arepa. <laughs> uh, today, uh, I wanted to start out by saying thank you so much for those of you who are joining live and those who are joining later. Okay, so today we are making glazed carrots and kale. And if you wanna see a picture of what it looks like when it's finished, I posted a picture on my feed. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. This recipe is not a, a drawn out recipe, it's pretty quick. And so I'm gonna show you some of the steps that I wouldn't ordinarily show you, like slicing carrots and like uh, de-stemming kale. So bear with me on those. Okay. So let's get started. So today, the ingredient list is pretty small. And I did want to mention that there's one ingredient you can use if you have it in your pantry. Uh, in my feed, I garnished the carrots and kale with some sesame seeds. Um, so if you have sesame seeds at home, you can kind of um, get those out now and add them to your dish. If not, they're a garnish. They'll add a little bit of flavor, but they won't change the essence of the dish. Uh, besides that, okay, so we have carrots. Uh, we have about, I have about seven carrots, and someone was asking me why a kitchen scale is important. So the recipe asks for six medium carrots. What does that even mean? What is a medium carrot? So um, the reason that a scale is important is that it can help you figure out exactly how much of something that you need so that you can replicate it again. So um, I'm gonna weigh out my carrots so that you can kind of get a sense of how much carrots I'm using because six carrots, like six small carrots like this is gonna be different than six big carrots like this, right? So. I'm just going to tell you about how much I'm using, and that's kind of why scale would be important, is so that you can replicate the dishes you make, or you can teach someone else how to make them and get a result that's similar to yours. So I have 530 grams, which is 1.1 pounds, which is one pound and two, almost three ounces. So you don't have to do this. I'm just kind of using like the beefier carrots and um, I have like seven of them. So there's that. So the first thing you're going to want to do is uh, slice these carrots. I've already washed them. We're going to slice them diagonally. Okay. So the reason that it's nice to chop these carrots diagonally or slice them diagonally is because we get more surface area on, on each medallion than if we were just slicing them like um, like this, like coins. So you want your your slices to be pretty much the same thickness all the way through, and so you get a little bit bigger pieces, and they'll cook evenly. So this is kind of how I'm slicing my little medallions. Okay. So the first thing you're gonna do is slice your carrots into medallions like that, and we're gonna put them in a pot of boiling water. So I'm gonna put them aside. I'm seeing now that I probably should have sliced most of these already. I didn't peel them uh, because I bought organic carrots, so I don't feel concerned about how clean these carrots are. I just scrubbed them a little bit to get the actual physical dirt off the surface of the carrots. But besides that, I haven't peeled them or anything weird or secret that you wouldn't know about. So we're, I'm gonna go ahead and try to get these sliced in even little diagonal slices. And while I'm doing that, I'm gonna tell you about the benefits of carrots. So carrots are uh, a crop that is often grown year-round, like in California, you can grow them year-round, but they're especially well-known as a winter crop because uh, they can grow through the winter at colder temperatures, and they can even withstand some frost. So we always think of carrots as a winter crop, 
and in the winter they're a little more sweet because the cold weather actually causes the carrot plant to store more carbohydrates in its root and so they come out a little sweeter and the method that we're making these today actually brings out the sweetness too we're gonna cook them low and slow so that you can really taste the carrot so this is good for um, people who want to eat more vegetables and who likes sweets and like sweet things so that's what the, the glaze and the cooking method brings out the natural sweetness of the carrots okay so I'm almost done here additionally I wanted to mention like the nutritional benefits of carrots so carrots are really high in fiber they are a root vegetable so you're storing a lot of like carbohydrates but um, so the carrots, the carrots are basically made of carbohydrates that the plant is storing in its root. And so because of that, carbohydrates, fiber is technically a carbohydrate. So the, the carbohydrate that the carrot stores in the root is good for your digestion, it's good for your um, microbiome, and yeah. And also, carrots are very famous for their beta carotene. So this, this type of vitamin A called beta carotene is actually named after carrots because that's um, a nutrient found in really high density in carrots. So beta carotene, which is good for our eyes. And also, carrots are, have healthy doses of calcium and potassium. So there are your nutrition facts for your carrots. We're gonna take our uh, carrot slices and we're gonna put them to boil in a pot of water for about three or four minutes. So, spoiler, I've already been heating this water. And I also have, so you can boil them. I'm using my Instant Pot as an extra cooking appliance here. I'm not using it as a pressure cooker, so just think of it as a pot of boiling water. So I have in my pot of boiling water, I have a steamer. And instead of boiling them directly in the water, I'm gonna steam them for three or four minutes with the lid on. And that's gonna allow me, that's gonna allow the carrots to soften a little bit um, so that when you put them in the pan, they're uh, already a little soft, okay? The next thing we're gonna do while that's going, we're gonna get started on the kale. So I have three types of kale here. You don't need three types of kale, you just need one bunch of kale. Um, I just wanted to show you all the different types of kale that are available so that if you went to the store, you would be able to see like, oh, that's kale, that's kale, and that's kale, okay? So we have uh, this, I took the labels off, now I don't remember what they're called. So this one is called dinosaur kale, and uh, it's got these long, thin leaves, well, not super thin, but a little bit thin, and they're just a little bit wrinkly, but they're not curly. So another word, another way that these are called is lacinato, lacinato kale. So they're dinosaur kale and lacinato kale are the same thing. So I'm going to show you how to strip this kale. So you're going to take the stems out because the stems take a little bit longer to cook. So we're not going to include them in this recipe. Um, so you're gonna pinch it at the top of the, well, the bottom of the stem, and you're gonna slide your fingers along the stem and kind of peel off the leaf from the stem. So you'll recognize this method if you saw my um, massaged kale salad uh, cook along. And what else I'm doing is I'm just tearing it apart so that it's just in little pieces. You don't have to chop it perfectly or anything like that. So I'm just tearing it with my fingers and collecting them in a bowl here. Okay, so that's the dinosaur kale. The next type of kale that I have here is red kale. And it's called red kale because it has this purple stem through the middle. I guess people thought it was red when they named it. And you're gonna do this in the same way. So this is like a different variety of kale. So if you ever see like a bunch of different types of lettuce, like it's the same thing. Um, and the nutrient profiles are slightly different, but it's still, they're still going to be good for you because they're leafy greens, okay? So that's the red kale. And 
I'm kind of just, when the leaf comes off the stem, with the stem, I'm just kind of still peeling them a little bit more. Okay, so we've got some red kale, some dinosaur kale, and then the last type of kale, this literally just says kale, so I guess this is like the standard type of kale. It's curly kale, and um, it's most similar to the red kale because you see how the leaves are a little bit curly. So this, all of these kale will work for this recipe. Pick whatever's in stock, uh, get a variety if you wanna mix it up, not a big deal. Okay, so I'm, wow, I've already been talking for three or four minutes here. That's impressive. Okay, so we're just gonna keep tearing up this kale for a little bit longer because I do wanna include this in the pot. And as you can see, it's not gonna break the, it's not gonna break the carrots to cook them a little bit longer. It also depends on how soft you like your things. So if you like that your carrots like a little bit tougher, like they have a little bit of bite still, then you're not gonna wanna steam them as long. But if you like your carrots really soft, then you might steam them a little bit longer. Okay. Okay, okay. We're getting full here. So the thing that's great about kale is also another winter crop. It can be grown year-round, but it prefers cooler weather. And kale is full of vitamin A and vitamin C. Uh, so if you're ever feeling sick, um, kale is a good way to go add some more leafy greens to your diet. They also have high amounts of iron, calcium, and potassium. So good for strong bones. So if you're like, okay, what does someone who doesn't eat milk eat to have strong bones to get their calcium? Well, kale is a great source of uh, calcium and so is carrots. So if you're getting older and you're worried about the health of your bones, this is a great dish to, or a great side to start adding to your meals. Okay, we're almost done here. Um, also iron, so if you have anemia, um, if you have anemia, I would recommend that you start with meat just for the getting your levels back up to normal, but then once your levels are back up to normal, then leafy greens like kale are a great choice for people with anemia. Okay, so we have those, and we have our carrots, they've been steaming, and we're going to go ahead and drain our carrots. And we're going to start sauteing them. So you're going to have to bear with me because it might get a little loud in here because my heating element is a little bit rowdy in terms of noise. But here we go. Okay, so you're going to turn on your pot pan and you're going to heat it up. And then you're going to add two tablespoons olive oil to the pan. This is going to start the base of your glaze. So remember the glaze is going to help bring out the sweetness of the veggies, it's going to be sweet in and of itself, and it's going to really add a lot of flavor to your veggie side. Okay. Mmm, this smells so good. This um, oil was a gift, and it's infused with lavender, so it smells delicious. I can't believe how good it smells. Okay, so you're going to wait till this oil heats up a little bit, and while you're waiting, I want you to start massaging your kale. So if you saw my cook along last year around this time, I made a massaged kale salad where I had to massage the kale for five minutes for an assignment. But this time it's not for an assignment and uh, we're just massaging it, you know, to make it more palatable. So the thing about kale is it's pretty fibrous and um, it takes a lot of cooking or massaging to break up those fibers. And if you are able to break up those fibers, it actually makes the kale a little bit, I don't want to say softer, but like less, um, less stringy. I don't know. So I used to think I hate, I couldn't eat kale, but once I learned how to massage it, it really helped um, soften it up. Okay, so once your pan is hot, once your pan is hot, you're gonna add the drained carrots to it. Oh, not drained enough, apparently. Okay, here we go. So be careful with those carrots. If they're still a little wet, they might cause the oil in the pan 
to splatter. So just be careful with that. So I'm stirring these carrots around the pan to try to get them coated with oil. My hands are already coated with oil because I've been massaging the kale, but I want the carrots to also be coated with oil. And once you feel like your carrots are pretty well coated with oil, you're going to go ahead and add all the rest of your ingredients. So, um, ooh, this is not horrible. Uh, Sergio wants me to tell you all that the kale loses a little bit of bitterness after the massage. I feel like we all do, don't we? We're a little sweeter after a massage. Okay. So I just have like a pinch of salt. You're going to do this to your taste. I have sea salt with me. Um, so go ahead and add a little bit of sea salt or a lot, depending on how you like it. Um, I know a lot of people shy away from salt, but sea salt is... Uh, really great for you because it has a lot of trace minerals and nutrients because it comes from the salt from the sea. So it's not just I, uh, potassium iodide. It has a lot of other uh, minerals that are good for your body that you only need like in small amounts. So if you use sea salt, you can start to get some of those minerals back into your diet. And table salt or regular salt doesn't give you those. Okay, so I've added the salt. The next thing I'm going to add, dang it, I miss my sous chef. I'm going to go get my coconut aminos out of the fridge. Okay, so we're going to add coconut aminos. Coconut aminos are the nectar from the blossom of the coconut plant. And they have, before, let me interrupt myself because my carrots are too high. You're going to put it on medium-low heat. So it shouldn't be on high heat. The lower the heat, the, the more browned these carrots are going to be and the sweeter they're going to be. So we're not trying to scorch them. We're trying to put them over low heat so that they get sweeter. So back to the coconut aminos. So coconut aminos are a soy-free way to get that kind of, I want to say, Asian-inspired taste. So usually... We use soy or tamari, which is also acceptable in this dish. But if you're trying to limit your soy, then coconut aminos are a great alternative. So I'm going to add one tablespoon coconut aminos. Honestly, I would probably want to add more because they taste so good. But do you start with one tablespoon and work from there? Okay, so coconut aminos. And then also the, the ingredients of the hour, the ingredient that really makes this dish is balsamic vinegar. So balsamic vinegar is a sweet vinegar made from grapes or made from wine, really. So I'm adding two tablespoons of balsamic vinegar. So all of these ingredients are sweet and we're reducing that's the, the kitchen term for what we're doing. We're reducing these liquids so that they're more dense and sweeter and less watery. And that's the goal of this dish here, it is to reduce these liquids uh, until they've kind of coated in a thick sauce or glaze. They've coated these vegetables, okay? So these carrots have been in here a little while. And I'm going to check to see how soft they are to see when I should add my kale. I don't want to overcook the kale because I don't want it to be like mushy or soggy. So. Okay, those carrots are good. So another note on the balsamic, when I did my test recipe yesterday, I used a white balsamic vinegar that I got on a trip to Napa and um, that one's like a little fancier, but it also doesn't give the traditional glazed look because it's like a clear vinegar. It's a clear balsamic vinegar. Um, but either of these work, the dark balsamic works. And so uh, don't, just look for a balsamic vinegar. And now I'm adding my kale to my pan. That's a lot of kale. Okay. So I'm adding the kale to my pan, and we are going to try to stir this around so that the kale also gets coated 
and the balsamic. I am going to intuitively cook right now. And because I used so much kale, I'm going to add another tablespoon of the balsamic vinegar so that it's easier for me to coat the kale with it as well. I want to make enough glaze so that it coats everything. So if you're at home and you have started, you haven't started, um, try to get a pan that's like wide, but also like has kind of deep edges so that when you toss your kale, it doesn't come over the edge. So I'm just kind of like moving this around in the pan, trying to get the kale to the bottom so I can coat it in the glaze that I'm creating. And the glaze is only three ingredients. It's olive oil, balsamic vinegar, and coconut aminos. So again, if you don't have coconut aminos at home, you can use soy sauce. It's not going to be as sweet because soy sauce is a little bit savory, more savory. It doesn't have the sweetness. Or you can use tamari as well. So if you have either of those in your cabinet, go ahead and use those, especially if you're not sensitive to soy. So I am going to turn up the heat a little bit. Um, on mine, that would be a 3 of 10. So like instead of low heat to medium low heat. But yeah, you're going to keep stirring this until the kale has wilted. You'll notice that the kale has wilted because it'll take up a lot less room in the pan. And this is really almost ready to go. Once you don't see any more liquid at the bottom of the pan and your kale is wilted, it's pretty much ready to serve. And yeah, again, if you want to see what it looks like when it's styled and fancy and pretty, you can go to my feed and see, look at that there. Um, so I asked on my stories uh, what some people would serve this with. So this is, I would call this like a side, a vegetable side. And so you probably want to serve this with um, a main that has like a higher amount of protein. And so I asked people like, oh, what would you serve this with? A lot of people said chicken, to serve this with chicken. So if you have like a favorite chicken dish, you could serve this alongside that. If uh, someone else said beef, so you could try it with beef, maybe get some like really thin cuts of beef and cook it before you, or add it to the pan after you take this all out to kind of get the same flavor profile. Uh, I think, I'm trying to think what I would serve it with. Probably something savory. I don't know. Honestly, yesterday I just ate it by itself. I ate all of the trial dish that I made. I ate it all by itself. It was really good. So. You could serve it with like quinoa, with rice, maybe fried rice would taste good next to it. Okay, so we're looking pretty okay here. I can see that almost all the liquid has evaporated. Now the liquid is kind of coming out of the kale and that's evaporating, that's what that steam is. Uh, that's the kale letting out its juices basically. So here it is, our glazed carrots and kale. You can see I used more than one bunch of kale, so it's pretty kale heavy. Um, if you're just learning to eat kale, I would start with one bunch of kale and see how you like it and see if you would want to cook it longer or shorter. You can go ahead and taste it. Uh, that's another thing. While you're cooking it, you can taste it and see if it needs more salt. which this definitely does. I'm glad I tasted it. Okay, so I'm adding a little bit more salt here. And here we go. Yeah. So that is your glazed carrot and kale. So now you can go home and cook these winter veggies for yourself. This is the first in a series of at least four cook-alongs that are going to be all about cooking with winter veggies. I want you all to learn how to cook in season. I know a lot of times it's kind of 
scary using ingredients that you've never used before, you don't know how to make them. Um, I'm just going to tell you right off the bat, sautéing them low and slow is always a good option for fruits or vegetables or foods that you have never used and you want to learn how they taste or what would taste good with them. Try sautéing them low and slow and see how it goes. Okay, so there's your final dish. So if you make this at home, I want you to tag me. If you think that someone else should make this at home, I want you to tag them. Share my video with them. Share my video with your mom. Share my video with your sister. Share my video with whoever it is at your house that makes the food so they can make it too. And um, I also wanted to add that I was, this is like a completely sidebar, but I was worried that I wasn't going to be able to get on Instagram Live today because my account wasn't working. So I wanted to remind you all that I have an email list and though that email list allows me to be in contact with you regardless of what social media service I'm using. Because if something happens to Instagram, then what am I going to do? How am I going to keep in touch with everyone who wants to cook or learn how to cook or watch my videos? So if you go to my profile, there is a link in the profile and that will get you to the sign up page to get on my email list. And the only emails that I'm sending right now are to the grocery list, sorry, the grocery list of the meal that we're going to make. And I send it the weekend before we make it so that you can go to the grocery store and get what's on that list and join me in the cook along. Um, so please sign up for my email list so that I can email you in case something happens. If Instagram's down, I can tell you where I'm doing my cook along. Um, if my page gets hacked or stolen or blocked or whatever, I can tell you where to go from there. So thank you so much for supporting me. And next week we are going to make bok choy. So if you want to learn how to make bok choy, make sure to sign up for that email list so that you can get the ingredients in your inbox before we cook and you can learn how to make bok choy. It's one of my favorite winter veggies. I really love bok choy. So I'm excited for you guys to join me next week. Let me know if you watched, send me a message. And if you make it yourself, send me a DM, tag me so that I can post it on my feed. Okay, see you guys later.